This video demonstrates heart transplantation in a 41-year-old female who presented with acutely decompensated heart failure. She initially developed heart failure secondary to postpartum cardiomyopathy. A standard midline sternotomy incision is made. Dissection is carried down to the sternum. The interclavicular ligament at the sternal notch is then carefully divided. An electrical saw is then used to perform a midline sternotomy. Next, sternal retractor is then placed. Pericardium is visualized. The thymus is divided. The pericardium is then incised open. The ascending aorta is then mobilized off the pulmonary artery. The ascending aorta is then dissected free followed by passing an umbilical tape around it. This is followed by dissection around the superior vena cava. Once the superior vena cava is dissected free, an umbilical tape is passed around the superior vena cava. Next, the inferior vena cava is dissected free from the surrounding tissue and is then controlled with an umbilical tape passed around it. Next, ethebon sutures are placed at the base of the innominate artery. This is done in preparation for arterial cannulation for the cardiopulmonary bypass. We then use proline suture to put purse strings around the superior and inferior vena cava. Prior to cannulation, the patient was systematically heparinized. The aortic arch is then cannulated and venotomy is made in the superior vena cava. A venous cannula is then introduced in the superior vena cava followed by introduction of a cannula in the inferior vena cava. We initiated cardiopulmonary bypass and had good drainage and good flow on bypass. Aortic cross clamp is then applied. We then proceed with excision of the recipient's native heart with an incision in the right atrial appendage. The incision is extended inferiorly toward the inferior vena cava. Superiorly, the incision is extended onto the roof of the left atrium between the superior vena cava and iota. The iota is then transected circumferentially approximately 1 cm distal to the sinotubular junction. The pulmonary artery is then divided 2 cm distal to the pulmonic valve. The incision is extended superiorly to the dome of the left atrium to meet the superior extension of the right atrial incision. Further dissection is then performed until the left atrial excision. The recipient heart is pulled off the field. A portion of the remaining right atrium is then removed leaving a cuff of right atrium on the recipient's inferior vena cava. Next, a vent is placed to the patient's right superior pulmonary vein. This is done to prevent warming of donor's heart during heart transplantation. The left atrial appendage is then excised and optimal hemostasis of the recipient's left atrial wall is achieved before bringing the donor's heart into the operative field. Next, an anastomosis is constructed between the recipient's and donor's left atrium using a 3O proline suture in a running fashion. We then proceed with constructing an anastomosis between the donor's right atrium 
in a piece of right atrium cuff left on the inferior vena cava of the recipient using a 4O proline suture as shown in this video. The right atrium to the inferior vena cava anastomosis is then completed This is followed by trimming the recipients and donors pulmonary artery for an appropriate length anastomosis A 5 proline suture is then used to perform an end-to-end -end anastomosis between the recipient's and donor's pulmonary artery. We then proceed with trimming the donor and recipient iota for an appropriate length anastomosis. This anastomosis between the donor and recipient is created using a 5O proline suture in a running fashion as shown in this video. We then proceed with creating an end-to-end -end anastomosis between the superior vena cava of the donor and recipient using a 5O proline suture in a running fashion. Once this anastomosis is completed, the tourniquet on the superior vena cava is loosened and the heart is distended. The heart is deared and the pulmonary anastomosis sutures are then tied. This is followed by deering the heart one more time and tying the aortic anastomosis sutures. This is followed by placement of a de-airing needle prior to removal of the cross clamp. Once the heart is de-aired, the aortic cross clamp is removed. Ventricular pacemaking wires are then placed. Followed by placement of atrial pacemaker wires. This concludes our demonstration 
of heart transplantation.